How's it going, everybody? This is going to be a tea guide for BJ and CC. This will be BJ meaning Brew Justice and CC meaning Cruise Chaser. So we're going to be talking about the LPDU strats. If you want the uh, Discord server for LPDU, uh, it is down in the description below. You should be uh, joining that if you want to run through some LPDU strats with uh, Light Data Center. Um, so if you're on EU, you're going to be doing these strats um, on Light DC. And BJ and CC is the phase that happens right after Limit Cut. If you'd like to see Phase 1 and Phase 2, or rather, they don't really call Limit Cut Phase 2, but if you want to see Phase 1 and Limit Cut Guide, um, link is down in the description for the playlist for that. So now we're going to get into the next phase. So let's get started. Uh, first off, I just want to say there's a lot going on here in this phase, um, and so bear with me. Uh, we're gonna have to explain through a lot of things uh, with the Nisi passes and Exactly when the water stacks happen and the thunder stuff. So we'll get through step by step right from the start So you just finished limit cut, right? You're gonna head to the middle after the eighth blast happens uh, in the middle You're just gonna immediately walk in after the middle explodes uh, on the eighth AOE uh, You do your AOE rotation whatever and for ninja I just put Duton and after I put Duton, I prep Suton until the boss becomes targetable. If that's for any ninja players out there. Um, the first thing you're going to do here is you're going to spread out inside the inner circle. I'm going to emphasize this right now. And here we have the picture of exactly how the spreads are going to look. If you see here, I'm going to zoom it in some more just so it's very, very clear. You see this cogwheel here? You're going to be inside the cogwheel spreading in Nisi positions. All right. Melee DPS are up, up here. Range DPS are down here. West and east are the healers. North and south are the tanks. I'm going to be showing this in the LPDU toolbox. And here they are. This is your default spreads for um, basically the Nisi uh, spots. So consider this as the Nisi spots. You're going to be using those. Don't spread out like they are in the picture. Go in the inner circles, right? So the best way to remember this is look at A marker. Use A marker as north and then just go to your position. Very simple. After you spread in those positions, you're going to be focusing BJ. Melees uh, will always focus BJ after they split. This is a split strat, meaning that the main tank will pull BJ north, and the off tank will be pulling Cruise Chaser south. So the Cruise Chaser is going to be south um, after all this is done, right? After the first Nisi, uh, Nisi passes happen, which we'll talk about right now. So first off, right, we're just doing our AOE rotation, focusing BJ as the priority, okay? So you throw everything on BJ, See, I'm doing my AoE rotation. I got my Tenchi Jin AoEs, and we're just pumping damage. We're all going to be getting debuffs. You look at the party list here. We all have debuffs for different Nisis. Alpha, Beta, Gamma, and Omega, right? So you want all these debuffs to last until the end of the fight towards after pa Nisi Pass 3, basically. The boss will do something at the end and make sure that everyone has those debuffs. And if you don't, if two people don't have two of each... You're all gonna die. So the whole idea behind this is keep it up as long as you can. So right here I have Omega and you can see it only lasts a few seconds, like 32 seconds left already on this. So what we do here is as a, uh, the cast link up happens, you're gonna be hearing a very distinctive sound of the chainsaw, uh, or you can call them the chak rams if you wish. So here's when you move out, okay? You're gonna be in here and I'm gonna put the volume up so you can hear the chak ram for yourself. So right here, when it says link up, I want you guys to hear the sound effect of the chak ram. All of first try, up until the exoplanet. You heard it? Right there, it goes When it makes that noise, it means you gotta dip. Uh, furthermore, you can look at the enmity list. You'll see in the enmity it. list, steam chak ram. And you see my, my chat box is in the way, but you can clearly see here that there is a cast bar happening here. So as soon as you see that cast bar, or slightly before that, it's totally fine. But what I like to personally do is I use the enmity list, and I see steam chak ram in the enmity list, and I see it just start loading. When it starts loading, like the cast, you immediately start walking out and everyone walks out of their like from your position you go out but if you're melee and you're since the main tank is pulling the boss north and you're melee you're but gonna be on bj okay so i'm gonna mute the audio here so you see i'm sticking with bj here and just doing damage making sure that the chakrams when they're thrown out they're not gonna hit me right so pay attention where the chakrams spawn what they spawn is completely random 
So you want to be able to move at the right spots. And here's a visual represent or representation of that. You can see we move the boss BJ to northeast in this case because if we pull it north, we're going to get hit by the chakra. We don't, we don't want that. Okay, so you want to be careful with this. You just want to make sure we're positioning right. You see the healer has just moved west east. And CC, same thing with off tank. The off tank is pulling it south. And the range DPS are basically hitting CC here. All right, so after that happens and everything, right? Once the chat brands go out, the moment they go out, and you want to move to the edge of the arena as much as you can, as much to the edge as you can before the cast happens, because the moment they go off, you're going to be pooping an AoE that explodes a few seconds later. So right now, where I'm standing, there's going to be an AoE here. On every single player that's basically on the edge, there's going to be an AoE exploding. So you want to immediately get back to the middle, back to your Nisi spread positions, right? And you're going to see right here, boom, those AoEs went off because you basically poop AoE. Um, that's why you move to the edge so that middle is safe. Okay, the most important thing here is that you don't touch your, you don't touch anyone else with your Nisi because it's going to pass that Nisi to them. And so the ideal thing here, um, the tanks and healers, as you can see here, they're in cardinal positions. They're all going to be standing still, okay? It's the DPS job to pass the Nisi to their partner going anti-clockwise okay so my partner here is solar right this is anti-clockwise of me see here this person is going to move to the off tank this person is going to move to the healer arrogant here the, our, my, the other melee will be moving to the main tank just like that and going in this motion so just remember your who your partner is and you're going to be passing that nisi back and forth with your partner okay this is Nisi pass number one. You only pass after all your health bars drop to one. So after this raid white happens, that's exactly the timing of where you're going to pass. Okay, so here it is again. And then you pass. You both of you now have it. Now, as long as you don't touch anyone else of a different color, you're good. So both of us here right now have Omega, right? Both these people have purple. Both, both these people have blue. Both these people have... Um, uh, beta, right? So you don't want to touch anyone else that's opposite or, or different than your symbol, okay? And we got that out of the way. As a melee here, you're either, um, you're going to be chilling here on BJ, DPSing him, or you're going to get lightning. If you do get lightning, you're going to move to the main tank where he's standing. So here's where I'm going to start explaining quite a lot of things because there's a lot happening here and everyone has different roles. So we're going to break it down. Okay, so here in this example, we have water lightning going off, okay? And so essentially, what this means is this dragoon had lightning. What lightning does is it will transfer to another player, and it has to transfer to another player um, as an AoE. So there's going to be an AoE happening on this dragoon right now, and they need to stand next to the main tank. Remember, this happens after the first Nisi pass, okay? Whoever gets lightning is completely random. Um, and so the lightning will head to the BJ tank and you're going to stand next to him. When the debuff runs out, it's going to make an AoE explosion that transfers to the Dark Knight and then the melee will just go back into position to damage BJ, okay? Now, water. One person is going to get water, okay? And that water debuff person is always going to be a healer, okay? The healer is going to go all the way west, sharp west, Okay, and they're going to stand there. What this is going to do is going to spawn a water tornado. And it's like a stack marker. And you need minimum three people to stack on this. If three people aren't there, it's going to be tough and you might die. Okay, minimum three. Four, even better. So the other healer can also go there. But here's the thing. The other healer could potentially have thunder. Since we said that thunder is given to anybody at all in the party. This is something we need to take into consideration. So if the other healer, for example, or a ranged DPS, right? A ranged DPS might get thunder, so they would have to go next to uh, the main tank and give thunder to them. Remember, the off tank at this point is just chilling south, keeping the boss facing south. That's all he's doing with CC, okay? Now, you need the ranged DPS here, and at least the healer who will definitely have the water debuff, you all will just relax here. The most important thing here, and I really want to emphasize this, the different, if you have different 
debuffs absolutely do not touch each other. So you're in a stack marker doesn't mean you want to be tightly stacked on top of each other and touching each other. You want to be a little bit spread out inside the stack. Don't worry, it's a pretty big AoE. As long as you're standing next to each other without touching each other, you'll be completely fine. So keep that in mind. That's important. The melees for the most part, <coughs> excuse me, the melees for the most part, they're going to be damaging BJ pretty much for the entirety of this phase, okay? So if you don't have lightning in your melee, you're just chilling. You're literally just DPSing. When you're done with lightning, you can just go back. If you're this melee, you can just go back here and keep damaging BJ, and it's completely fine. After that, um, it's pretty much you can go back to your positions, and you'll see that the water uh, thunder has spawned on the west. So now it's hustle time. At this point, after the water stacks happen, Cruise Chaser is going to, sorry, BJ is going to throw out mines on the furthest targets. The furthest targets are, uh, the furthest targets from BJ, I'd like to emphasize. So the off tank and a ranged physical DPS will be all the way to the edge and they'll be the ones baiting, okay? So keep this in mind. These two here, they're baiting the mines from BJ, which is like a missile, right? And that's basically the simplest step, really. You do that right after the water stack happens. The water stack happens, you start moving, and you start baiting. The rest just damage BJ. Range DPS can damage CC if they want, but melee is always on BJ. Okay? And also keep in mind, uh, as a reminder, the main tank has thunder. Remember this. So I'm going to showcase this example here with my gameplay. So as you can see here in my example, I don't have lightning, so I'm just chilling, DPSing behind the boss. And the person that has lightning has resolved their mechanic. The other melee had lightning, which is arrogant here. And so he's going to move back here, and we're just going to be DPS DPSing. Notice no one's touching each other. If you don't have a debuff on top of you, if you don't have a, a gamma, alpha, whatever, you can touch each other fine. But just keep this in mind, that you don't want to touch people when you have the debuff. Next up here that happens is Unimeration, which this will be the next mechanic after uh, the ranged physical DPS and the off tank have baited the landmines uh, from Brute Justice casting. So once again, I'm going to emphasize this, okay? I'm going to I'm going to tell you the cast. The cast bar, Missile Command, right? Missile Command is the bait for uh, South. So you can see he shot out some rockets. It shoots it on the furthest target from BJ in this example. Um, the off tank and the range physical DPS uh, are the ones baiting that. Okay. Now, Unimeration. This is going to be three man stacks. So Unimeration, the way it works, is three people, not more, not less. Exactly three people need to be stacked on uh, each one. Okay. And keep in mind, it always goes on a DPS. Now, we have four DPS. Okay. There are four DPS members. Two of them are going to get it. Okay, so I'm going to be explaining here two people, one melee, okay? So one melee and one ranged physical, we will appoint them as the flexors. Ideally, the one that's positioned northeast on Nisi Pass will be the one doing the flex because they're already on the right side so they can move right side if they need to flex. So what do we mean when we talk flex, right? What does that mean? Well, let's get into details. Okay, so here we have an example, all right? Let's just take this example right here. So we have, first we'll talk about generation stacks, and then we'll talk about what the tanks need to do in this case, because uh, in this example here, because the tanks actually need to do something else while the tanks, uh, sorry, while the DPS and healers are doing their stack generations, these two are doing something else. Okay, so we'll take this as the default positions for stack, all right? Ninja, Dragoon, and White Mage. So melee one, melee two, and the healer, okay? And the two ranged DPS will be on the other stack, okay? Two ranged DPS and the other healer, okay? So we got that out of the way. Now, let's say if we have an example where, like we said, two DPS are going to get um, the stack marker. If me and the Dragoon both get it, right? We assign the flex member. So in this case, the Dragoon is the flex member. All that needs to be done in this example since we assign two flexors, the Dragoon and the Dancer, they will swap positions, and that's it, okay? It's very simple. The same thing goes here. If the Summoner and the Dancer both get Humanoration stack, the ranged physical will move left, 
and the dragoon who is flexing will move right. This is this, we only do this if the same person in our group also has a stack marker since you don't want to explode. So this minimizes any type of errors and all it does is make sure that there are two groups and make sure that there's three people always. Very simple, okay? So dancer goes left, dragoon goes right during flex situation. Remember, the two melees are left, the two ranged DPS are right. And that's it. That's pretty much the mechanic right here. The tanks in this example. One of the tanks, either main tank or off tank, is going to get an ice debuff. Essentially what they need to do is walk close to the west tornado, as you can see here, and the ice debuff will explode. When the debuff runs out, it's going to freeze the water here, which is going to be extremely important later on because you're going to hide behind the ice, basically. Um, and so we freeze it. So make sure whatever tank you are, main tank or off tank, pay attention to your debuff and start rolling. I'd like to also keep in mind that you don't want to get too close to the NATO or you're going to die. And after the ice puddle is placed, immediately start moving out of the ice puddle. It grows consecutively it goes once and then twice so if you're a melee dps just make sure you're a little bit more to the right just to make sure you don't get hit by the ice because it does kind of grow outwards a little bit and i'm going to show that in in game as well the off tank here is going to pop mitigations and he's going to pop the two mines that are here okay so there's going to be two mines right here you're going to walk up to them with mitigations and make sure you basically consume them in a sense you're going to eat those mines uh, these two mines with big cooldowns. After that's done, after the off tank ex uh, gets the mines, uh, you're going to make sure you Nisi pass. It's going to be the second Nisi pass. So we're going to be talking about that. Let's go over back to our gameplay. Okay, so we can see here generation goes off. We don't need to flex. Tank. Tank is positioned. Look how, look how far he is from the NATO, okay? Look, he stands right here. It explodes, right? There you have it. So once again, I'll show it. Look where the tank is standing. And that AOE right there is further enough. And it will freeze the ice. It be, as you can see, the water NATO became an ice there. Okay? Huge. As long as you stand northwest, you're good. Just make sure you're not too far, but not too close. So the enumeration goes off here, right? After the enumeration goes off, after the stack markers go off, immediately begin Nisi passing. Okay? So the same partner you Nisi passed with on the first Nisi pass, you want to pass to them again. Okay, so in this example, I'm passing it with my teammate Solar, who I passed in the first Nisi pass. Everyone's going to be doing the exact same thing. Same with the off tank. Off tank and south, uh, is south side. Whoever passed with, with the south person will go south and give them Nisi pass. Okay, so that's it. As you can see here, the ice is expanding. So I move a little bit to the right, make sure we're fine. The tank now, the main tank is just doing shit at north. That's all they need to do. Keeping stuff at north and you're good. Now... Right here is a crucial, crucial thing that we need to talk about. Let's hold over to the toolbox. After the second Nisi pass, okay, the healer that had the first water, right? The first water, he basically got the water debuff and went the west. The healer with the first water will share the lightning with the tank. So remember how we said we passed the first lightning to the main tank? Now the main tank will pass it to the healer. So why are we passing this lightning stuff in the first place, it has to pass to somebody or you're all gonna die. Basically, that's how it works. So you wanna make sure that someone is if someone gets it and is being passed to. That's a very important part. Now, the next water stack is going to be northeast. So as you can see here, the dancer, the summoner, and the white mage, right? The ranged DPS on the healers will be taking the second water stack, basically, and this will be fine. You can also have one melee go in if need be. Uh, it just makes the stack less risky. So you, you can have one melee go in and take the stack. Or let it three. It's up to you. But it does work just fine. So I'm going to be showcasing this in game now. You can see I'm DPSing the boss for now. And then you can see on B marker, right? On B marker, you have the person that has the water sitting down at B marker, which is northeast. And then you'll have two range dps right here you can see my chat box is covering but you can see there's someone there that's the range dps and we have the summoner also here so these are three of them going to be basically eating and watch how they're stacked right they're not touching each other they have some room and you can see it's a pretty pretty big aoe and boom they take the water stack and you're good 
Next up is going to be Verdict, right? So here we go. This is going to be third Nisi Pass coming up, and I'm going to go through this step by step. So we just finished second Water and second Lightning, okay? We just finished that. Right after that is going to be CC Shield plus Flare Thrower. The Flare Thrower, the main tank, will position themselves where the Northeast Tornado was placed, and basically BJ is going to cast this in that direction so the main tank has to move in position so bj is going to be facing this way and make sure to face it this way so it it basically goes on the water nado and that's primarily it and the next thing is the cc down here is going to get a shield and that shield must be broken the range dps and the off tank will be focusing the shield as well as the healers they can focus the shield as well the melee DPS will continue to damage BJ during this. Now, here's the most important part, the third Nisi Pass. The third Nisi Pass is very, very simple, okay? We can talk it step by step. There's only one thing you need to understand, okay? The difference between this symbol and the difference between that symbol, okay? The one that has two exclamation marks means you need to receive that thing, whatever it is. So if let's say this ninja right here, he has B, right? He has beta and there's two exclamation marks. It means he needs to receive beta, okay? If you have one and it doesn't have two exclamation marks, it means you need to give it to someone that needs your things. And as the Dragoon needs it with a double exclamation mark, he will walk on top of the Dark Knight to receive that thing. The best way to do this is by looking at your party list and knowing who you need to give it to. So the Dark Knight has Alpha, and the Dragoon has to take it, because he's Alpha. So, we have this lineup. BJ tank, main tank, facing up from north to south. Main tank, healer one, healer two, off tank. You position in a straight line like this, the off tank will be tanking CC at south, this is where the shield's gonna happen. The two healers will be in the middle to heal everyone. And the main tank will just be at north, making sure BJ is hitting him. And that's primarily it. The DPS are responsible for walking in to their partners that need the different things. So keep this in mind. This is going to be important. Okay, I'm going to show this now in terms of my gameplay. And look what we do here, okay? You can see right here, right? That I'm looking at my party list. After the flare thrower happened... After the flare thrower happened, I begin Nisi passing, okay? The ranged DPS and the... The ranged DPS on the healers will damage the shield at south, okay? So re keep this in mind. Ideally, I might have passed my Nisi a bit too early here because I could have continued damaging and let this thing tick down. But basically, you want to pass Nisi's after the shield is broken, normally. But either way, my point here is I'm going to give it to the main tank. So let's look at the party list here. Here we go. Party list, right? This is your best friend right here. All these debuffs here, they're your best friend. The only thing you need to look at is this symbol here that doesn't have two exclamation marks and the one that has. So as you can see here, I have Omega, but I need to receive Gamma, okay? So I need to look for someone that has Omega, okay? So it's always going to be a tank and healer, tank or healer. So you look at the tank and healers, and we look here. All right, here we go. This person, the tank, needs Omega. I have Omega, so I'm going to be giving them Omega. You get me? This is how we do it, okay? The all, it can be also be the other way. The tank healers could have the thing, and then you would get that thing from them. The, the DPS are always the ones moving, basically. That's all you need to know, okay? So this example here, I'm going to walk to the main tank because they need Omega, the thing that I have, right? Ignore this gamma here that has two exclamation marks right now. If you have two of those debuffs, it means for the last last set, uh, you're going to be doing this, which comes after. Okay, This is after third Nisi pass completely. Okay, So I walk on top of the tank. I give them the thing that they need, that they have to receive, which is Omega. So now they have Omega. And now I'm chilling, DPSing the boss, and then I move over to the Water lightning that happens at northeast. Now, one melee has to actually be here. The other range DPS cannot cannot do this, or one healer. So basically, you need to be northeast here, 
at least three or four, right? So we have Aragon, my other melee. He's coming up with a stack, okay? And there you go. Now, you can see here, when you take a water stack, right, you cannot stack there again. So last time, who had water? The sage had water. This sage is currently not in the stack because if he is, he's going to die. He has a water debuff that doesn't allow him to take another water stack. Okay? So keep this in mind. So the melees can position here with the two range DPS in this example. Okay? So remember, if you had second water lightning, uh, second water rather, as the debuff, you're not going to be able to, you see, water resistance down. Cannot take another water. That's it. So we take that. Boom, bada, boom. Just like that. I'm going to be showing this now in the toolbox. Here's the third water lightning. You'll see that um, the summoner here and the melees and the healer, they can take it. See the dancer in this example? The dancer in this example is just going to be damaging Cruise Chaser. He's chilling. The dancer in this example has water resistance down. So they cannot take this water stack. Okay? And the main tank is just tanking north. And that's pretty much it. The mechanic resolves like this. After this happens and you're done with that, okay, look at where the, the healer is, right? Remember the first person that placed the water west, took the lightning off main tank, right? Now they're going to go south towards the off tank and they're going to give them the lightning debuff. So this lightning healer will be going to the cruise chaser tank and that's primarily what you got to do here, okay? So remember, if you're a healer and you get the first water, you have pretty important role, right? You have to go west, then north, then south, depending on the positions that you need to go, depending on the phases. So remember this. Remember your moves. And after third Nisi pass, your move is to go southwest. If you had the first water, you're going to be going southwest to the off tank. That's primarily it. Next up is lineup, the final lineup. We're going to be calling it B-Pog. Okay, B Pog is basically blue, purple, orange, green. Okay, so if you're blue, you're gonna stand all the way to the west here. If you're purple over here, if you're orange, which is beta, over here, and if you're green, which is omega, all the way to the edge, you're being the last one here. You're gonna line up here. The DPS are the ones that are gonna be lining up this time, and the tanks and healers are gonna be walking in and collecting everything. Okay. Exact same thing. Remember the receiving and needing? Uh, do you remember the receiving and and need to pass? Keep an eye on that. Look at the party list. See who needs to receive the debuff that you have. Okay? And here we have them pass up. And basically we have two people with alpha, two people with gamma, two people with beta, two people with omega. You have all of these lined up here. Okay? And then there's going to be a cast that happens here. And it's going to be boom, right? And after that boom, right? It's going to check if you have all the, the Nisis. And if you do, congratulations, you passed the Nisi mechanic. And now Nisis are gone. That is primarily it. Okay, so I'm going to be showing this now in terms of its gameplay. So we're at Nisi Pass 3. I give this person the debuff because they need to receive Omega, okay? After that, I move to Northeast as a melee because... The other healer has water resistance and cannot do a three-man stack. So as melee, you can be four if you want to make it safe. In this case, we four-man stacked, okay? Next up, lineup. DPS will have lineup. As you can see, my debuff here is Gamma. That's purple. Remember, B Pog. B Pog. So P, I am the Pog. I'm the P. So I will be second in line, right behind the blue person, right behind Alpha. So I'm going to be right here. I can do some melee DPSing right here while I'm positioning. And I need to receive Gamma, right? It's the tank and healer's job to run to me. So as you can see here, the tank walked up to me and gave me the purple, okay? So that's what I needed. Remember, when Cruise, if you're the tank, tanking Cruise Chaser, wait till Cruise Chaser casts Propeller Wind. Because the the propeller wind is basically going to be the attack where Crusader stands still. Okay? So in this example, cast propeller wind, and then the tank moves to me, the off tank. Okay? And then gavel is going to happen for boot justice, and gavel is going to check who, uh, if we all have debuffs. And I noticed, okay, we all have debuffs. Pog, you passed the mechanic. Now, 
After this, it's fairly simple. You're going to be focusing Cruise Chaser. You're going to be DPSing Cruise Chaser pretty hard here. Unleash the damage. And the goal is to kill them both at the same time. So because Cruise Chaser's uh, DP, uh, health bar is uh, lower, which it usually will be uh, for the most part, you're going to be damaging Cruise Chaser. But you don't want to kill it, okay? So as you can see, I swap targets here and I hold. But we do end up killing it a lot at 0.1%, so here we kill it, and then right after this mechanic happens, uh, we kill Brew Justice, and it's dead, because we did a lot of damage, and that is primarily the entire phase, that is primarily the entire phase for BJ and CC, so here it is, this is the final lineup and everything, the tanks give it to the people that need to receive, and then after that, BJ is going to jump on the furthest, furthest um, player, so in this example, right, the physical range will be the one doing this, right? So after the lineups happen, okay, after lineups happen and verdict happens and you no longer have alpha, beta, gamma, omega, you no longer have these debuffs, the physical range DPS is going to go all the way east, right, to bait BJ jump. And remember, BJ targets the furthest person in that case, and everyone else is literally just going to be on CC. The range physical moves here and then you want to be careful from this cone this is the range of the cone so that's why we waited before going in if you walk into this it's not going to be good for you so watch out for that and primarily that's the entire that's the entire mechanics of bj and cc i hopefully have explained this i tried to explain this as best as i can and hopefully this guide has helped out if again if you would like to check out the rest of the lpdu strats for uh living liquid and uh limit cut um, link is down in the description below for the entire T playlist guide. Uh, we're going to be going to the next phase after, which, to be honest, uh, is actually much more simpler uh, than what I just explained here. Uh, it's going to be um, phase three, uh, as well as wormhole. So, and then finally, it's going to be perfect Alexander, and then the whole guide will be complete. Um, but yeah, that's primarily it. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching this uh, video. I hope hopefully helped out. Remember to check out the Discord. Um, LPDU Discord is down in the description. I'll be putting in the pinned comment as well for you guys to check out. Check out the other videos and uh, give this video a like if, uh, if this helped you. If not, then I'm sorry. <laughs> if not, please uh, feel free to ask me questions. I'll hopefully clarify and uh, make things uh, uh, more simplified uh, because this is the best way that I could simplify everything for the LPDU strats. And yeah, join the community, guys. Join the community. Uh, it would be lovely to have you guys. All right. Thank you guys so much. And I'll catch you in the arena. Peace out. Love you guys.